To construct the gut bucket, we started with an empty plastic wash basin. This one is 43 centimeters by 35 centimeters for the abdominal cavity. Tape in a paper towel roll, which has been cut in half lengthwise, to indicate the spine. Cut slits on each side of the wash basin where the diaphragm will be secured. Using the top of a pair of pantyhose, insert the diaphragm through the slits and tape into place on the outside of the wash basin. For the lungs, you need a 29 centimeter piece of clear plastic, which you're going to cut into three pieces, 11 centimeters for the trachea and two centimeters, two nine centimeter pieces for the bronchi. Assemble the trachea and the bronchi into a copper pipe T or a plastic one, whatever you have available, and attach balloons to the end of the bronchi for the lungs. Place this in the basin. I already have cut a hole in the top of the wash basin to insert the trachea. For the heart, use a red balloon, which you're going to fill with barley, and uh, we used a funnel to put the barley into the balloon, until it's fist sized or about 310 grams. Tape a six centimeter plastic cup into the basin just left of the spine to elevate the heart and place and tape the heart to the cup. For the kidneys, construct a kidney pattern, five by five centimeters, or 5.5 centimeters by 10 centimeters. Then pin your pattern to some fabric, cut that, sew it, and stuff it with fiber fill. The end product will look like this. Then you're going to pin a 25 centimeter piece of three millimeter rubber tubing to each kidney to indicate the ureters. Note when you place the kidney in the basin, the left kidney will be higher than the right because of the liver. We've used a variety of different colored fabric. You can use whatever you have available. And we just put a little hole at the bottom of the basin to indicate where the ureters would then lead to the bladder. For the liver, construct a liver pattern, 22, 26 centimeters by 14, 16 centimeters. Pin the pattern to the fabric, cut it, sew it, and again, stuff it with fiber fill. We used about this much, but you just use whatever you need to adequately fill it to your finished product. You're going to construct a gallbladder by using a funnel to fill a green balloon with barley until about eight centimeters long and four centimeters wide if fully distended and can hold about 50 milliliters. We pin the gallbladder into place on the back side of the liver. Then you can place that in the basin with the gallbladder barely showing. Obviously, if it's distended, you'll see more of the gallbladder. For the pancreas, you construct a pancreas pattern and that's about 12 centimeters long, uh, sort of carrot shaped. So then you're going to pin your pattern to your fabric, cut that out, sew it, stuff it with fiber fill until it looks a bit like this or someone like this. Place that into the bucket and it just sort of tucks under the liver. The next we're going to do a stomach, so you construct the stomach pattern. And that is just a fist sized. Pin your pattern to your fabric, cut it out and sew it and stuff it with fiber fill till it looks about this shape. It is again an irregularly sized uh, shape. Then you're going to cut a hole in the diaphragm. So in the pantyhose, you're going to cut a hole to insert the upper end of the stomach and place that in. For the large and small intestines, we make the large intestine, um, which is about 1.5 meters, by cutting the legs off a pair of pantyhose and again, fill them with the fiber fill. You're going to attach the two open ends to make one long piece, and again, that's 1.5 meters. To make the appendix, 
not the tip of the toe in one end of the pantyhose. And really the appendix should be about 10 centimeters in length and seven millimeters in diameter if it's a normal um, appendix. For the small intestine, you'll need seven meters of soft foam tubing. We got this from our surgical skills um, department. That was where they had it the most available. Then you're going to connect the large intestine to the small intestine. We just used twist ties um, or elastics or tape or whatever it is that you need. And then you're going to attach the small intestine to the end of the stomach. And again, we just used a twist tie. So this is what you want your ribs to eventually look like. So you can see in the bucket, the ribs are in place. How we got to that step was to start out with a pattern of ribs. We drew that on mylar. And we cut that pattern out to look like this. We then strengthen the ribs by placing a shim on the sternum of the ribs on the back side, duct taping that into place. We also strengthened the actual each rib with a piece of wire onto each rib and then sport, use, using sport tape, tape that in place. So that all of that eventually ended up looking like what you see in the bucket currently. The ribs in the bucket have a hinge attached at the very top of the sternum onto the bucket and that allows the ribs to be lifted up or down. By lifting the ribs up you can see the organs just more easily. So in summary, just so that we're all on the same page, you can see at the very top of the bucket, you can see the heart. You can also see some of the trachea, and bronchi, and lungs, however, they're, because they're deflated, they're more difficult to see. Then just working our way down, you can see the liver. You can see a tiny bit of the gallbladder uh, just underneath the, the liver. You can see the stomach. You can see the small intestines all wound in, and then you can see the large intestine as well. Uh, and you can see, if you look closely, the appendix. Obviously, you can't see the kidneys, nor can you see the pancreas. So the only thing left to put in is the spleen. So for the spleen, we make a pattern, and that would be seven centimeters by 11 or 12 centimeters. It's kind of flat and squishy. You pin the pattern to the fabric. cut it out, sew it, and stuff it with fiber fill. You then tuck the spleen underneath the ninth and 12th left ribs laterally. Then this is how the finished product should look. We recognize there are many limitations to this model. It's a very basic representation of the abdominal organs within a human, and it's really designed specifically for the training needs at our standardized patient program. It's certainly not intended to be a completely accurate representation of the human abdomen, but really just a tool to help facilitate simulation of physical roles. Thank you, and we hope that this can help you in your standardized patient program.